My name is Takuya Watanabe uh, from Japan. Uh, I work for NTT and I'm a PhD student at uh, Waseda University. Today I will present about a uh, uh, kind of uh, offensive security for web, web services. Right. Uh, in this work, we study the security flaws of web rehosting services we named. Uh, I will present five attacks against the web rehosting services, and then I show the feasibility of the attacks on real web rehosting services. And finally, I'll provide effective countermeasures of uh, the attacks. Oh, okay. Yeah, first I'll talk about the background of this work. Uh, despite efforts to provide the openness of the internet, various types of obstacles still exist in the web, such as language barrier, missing web page, and uh, access blocking. We often encounter we cannot understand due to linguistic issues, and we often encounter content deleted from the web with some reasons. And authorities, such as nations, or companies, and schools block our access to a certain domain names to keep their order. To remove such obstacles, uh, there is a group of intermediary web services uh, that we Call web rehosting. Web rehosting uh, fetch web pages a user wants to view and rehost the pages on their server. We conducted the first study to investigate the security flaws in common to web rehosting. We found three main categories that make up rehost web rehosting services. Website translators and web archives are popular all over the world, and web-based proxies seem to be used more often in censored areas, uh, blocking users to access uh, like uh, to social media or video sites. We experimented with uh, 21 major web rehostings, including uh, Google Translate, Wayback Machine, Google Cache, and Proxy Site. The total number of accesses for these services exceeds ex ex 200 million per day. Okay. I show the typical web rehosting usages. Uh, a user requests web rehostings to rehost google.com by using web forms or direct links. Web rehosting is generally rehost a URL like google.com given from a query string to the domain of the web rehosting like rehosted, uh, rehosted example. So I will describe architecture common to web rehostings. Uh, basically, the content of pages rehosted by web rehostings uh, unchanged from its original content uh, however, the domain name of uh, each page is uh, unified to the domain of the web rehosting, like uh, rehosted.example. Uh, that is, all different web pages placed on web rehosting will have the single origin. This is why we titled our paper Melting Pot of Origins. We identified three core uh, Rehosting rules of web rehosting. The first is URL rewriting, as I just said. All contents on web rehosting will be placed on the same origin. And the second is rehostable file types. All services support HTML and plain text, but some translators do not support JavaScript files. The third is how web rehosting handle browser resources. Uh, the JavaScript code to access to the browser resources remains, but its origin will be changed to web rehosting. And some web proxies support websites login functions uh, by relaying HTTP cookies. Okay. With exploiting the, uh, that architectures, a third party attacker can intentionally place malicious content on the origin of web rehosting. All of the attacks I will introduce are backed by this common security flaw of web rehostings. 
Okay, I refer to the pages on web hostings as rehosted pages, and the attacker's page on web hostings as rehosted malicious page. Okay, I will introduce five attacks against web hostings, uh, named persistent mind in the middle, privilege abuse, credential theft, history theft, and the session hijack and injection. These attacks exploit both of modern and uh, traditional browser features like uh, service worker or cookies. Okay. We assume uh, here. Two threat models. The one is that a user who visits a rehosted Marshall's page beforehand uses web hosting services. And another one is that a user who used web hosting services visits the rehosted Marshall's page afterwards. First, I will explain attack one using the threat model on the left hand. The user visits the rehosted Marshall's page. Then the Marshall's page registers a script in the user's browser. After that, the user uses web hosting as usual. At this time, the registered script intercepts all of the user's requests and responses to the web hosting. We call this attack persistent mind the middle. The script registered at the rehosted Marshall's page allows the attacker to intercept with the user's communications. For example, when tampering is performed, users who browse to, browse to a legitimate website using a legitimate translator will see fake virus infection screen like this or fake news. And the service worker is a key feature to establish attack one. This is an event-driven JavaScript that is registered in the user's browser and scopes requests and responses to other pages on the same origin. There are some security restrictions for using service workers working on secure context requiring the same origins and requiring a MIME type for JavaScript. The restrictions prevent attacks from the network paths or uh, typical cross-site scripting. However, do, they do not prevent attacks against web hosting. In the context of our threat model, a service worker registered at the rehosted Marshall's page scopes all rehosted pages. Okay, I show examples of a service worker script, SWJS, and a register page, register HTML. If a user accesses register, register HTML directly without web hosting, SWJS is registered, but it is meaningful, uh, uh, meaningless for the attacker because SWJS only scopes the domain name owned by the attacker, like every example. So the attacker needs to rehost the register page to scope web rehosting. However, uh, rehosting the register page as it is will fail the attack because after being rehosted register page, the argument SWJS refers to a non-existent relative path like uh, this. So the attacker needs to change the reference SWJS to the one for the absolute path after rehosted. Okay. And now uh, SWJS is registered and the attack is successful. For all attacks, the attacker needs to prepare malicious code with considering the rehosting rules. During the experiment, we found an inter interesting case. Google Translate has a function to translate uh, web pages, and the attack using service worker is successful. In addition, we found that the translation results for uploaded document appear in the URL of the same origin. This means that the attacker can monitor the translation of uh, local documents containing uh, confidential or privacy information by using service workers. Please refer to expansions of the attack in our paper. 
uh, we presented the techniques to rehost service worker script to web translator uh, and uh, some expansions. We found that persistent mind in the middle is successful in 13 out of 21 web rehosting services. Next, I'll explain attack two to five based on another threat model. Firstly, a user uses a web rehosting service as usual. A rehosted page sometimes write any data to browsers, and then the user visits a rehosted Marshall page. And at this time, the rehosted Marshall page accesses the data stored on other rehosted pages. Let me talk about the attack to privilege abuse. A user visits rehosted pages, I mean benign pages. Sometimes the rehosted page asks the user for permission to use sensitive resource such as location data, camera, microphone, and notification. Once the user chooses allow, the permission is granted to the origin of web rehosting, not to the origin of the website user intended. Therefore, a rehosted Marshall page can reuse the permission which is granted at the rehosted P9 page by the user. We found that the privilege abuse is successful in 13 out of 21 web rehosting services. Okay, and next, I present attack three credential theft. Uh, this attack only works for web proxies that support logging into rehosted pages. Uh, the attack procedure is similar to the privilege abuse. A user visits a rehosted page which requires logging. Then the user logs into the rehosted page and stores his ID and password in password manager. However, the ID and the password are stored for the origin of web rehosting. So if the user visits a rehosted Marshall page later, the password manager uh, outfits the ID and the password to a fake home. We found that the privilege abuse, uh, sorry, uh, credential theft is successful in nine out of 11 web proxies. Attack four is a way to steal a user's browsing history through web rehosting. I explained the steps of the history theft. Uh, user visits a rehosted page and the page writes cookie or local storage by using JavaScript. Uh, the origin at this time is web rehosting, so rehosted Marshall's page can retrieve the data of cookies or local storage. And finally, the attacker estimates browsing history by using retrieved data. For example, uh, if a user has visited the NDSS website via web rehosting service, an attacker retrieves cookies with the name underscore GA, underscore GAT, and underscore GID. These strings are used by many websites as the cookie names, so the attacker cannot identify the browsing history for of NDSS website. On the other hand, the Catamaran Resort website writes a unique cookie name as underscore DC, underscore GTM, underscore UA, and some numeric strings. Since uh, there is only one website that writes a cookie with this name, so the attacker can identify that the user has visited the Catamaran website via web hosting. The percentage of identifiable websites is almost 40% of Alexa top 10,000, including some sensitive websites, such as porn sites, dating sites, and uh, piracy sites. We found that the history theft is established in 18 out of 21 web rehosting services. Attack five is session hijacking and the injection for the rehosted page. This is an attack for web proxies. Uh, I showed the cookies uh, when logging into when uh, Facebook directory as above and when logging in Facebook by using a web proxy as below. Web proxy transparently handles user login by passing the user cookie and send it to Facebook. And with the same principle as other attacks, a rehosted Marshall's page obtains the login cookie of web rehosting users. So the Facebook session ID is stolen here. Uh, of course, not only Facebook, but also any services that require login. 
This attack can be prevented by the HTTP only flag, which is a basic mechanism for preventing general XSS. But surprisingly, uh, most web proxies are not enabled HTTP only. Uh, although details are omitted here, this flag also makes an attack called session injection or called session fixation. It forces the user to log in to an account prepared by an attacker. We found that this, uh, this attack is successful in eight of 11 web proxies. This table summarizes all experimental re results. Close the circle indicates uh, the service is vulnerable, and open circles indicates that it is secure. We found that 18 out of 21 web rehosting services are vulnerable to at least one of our attacks. The reason why the three services do not have any vulnerability is uh, simple. These web rehosting services remove all JavaScript code from rehosted pages. Therefore, the attacker cannot generate a rehosted malicious page. Our experiments cover eight major browsers. Uh, it's worth noting that every attacks work in Google Chrome for PC and mobile, which have the largest number of users. I present a feasible defenses for web hosting. A straightforward solution would be to generate a different subdomain for each rehosted website. A major drawback of this solution is that already generated URLs, which may be referred from somewhere else, will become invalid. And uh, we discovered other options of possible media for web hosting and users in paper. Okay. And based on SQL consideration, we reported to affected service providers we examined. Oh, sorry. And, and also, uh, we plan to publish a web article that makes risks and defenses more widely known in cooperation with JPSAT CC. Okay, uh, I, I'll skip our future directions. Okay, that, that's all for my presentation. Thank you for your attention. I was just wondering why your attacks actually failed in some cases. They seem like they should work in most cases, so why they failed? Uh, uh, d depends on attacks, but uh, one example uh, on service worker, uh, some services does not, does not accept to rehost uh, JavaScript file, uh, which works as uh, service worker script. So, so the attack one doesn't work for such services. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, I have one more question. <laughs> okay, no. So, um, so would you recommend that these rehosting services not be used? I mean, you can yeah. fix individual problems, but overall, is it a good idea to force this rehosting without the website's knowledge? Yeah, actually, I. Yeah, it, it is not a bad thing to use web rehosting, mm -hmm. and user can uh, user can defend these attacks uh, by using uh, private browsing, or and um, yeah, not not. Uh, deny some, any permissions. So if a user uh, make attention, so, uh, it is not, not a bad thing to use web hosting, I think. All right, let's thank the speaker once again. <laughs>